Matt had always been close to his father. His mom died when he was 10, so it had just been him and his dad for a long time. Even after he died, Matt felt like he could still talk to him. So when it was his 18th birthday and he visited his father's grave, he was excited to share the news with him. But as soon as Matt arrived at the gravesite, a tall man in all black clothing appeared out of nowhere. The man handed Matt a little black book and said ominously, Today you're 18. It's time to begin. As Matt looked down at the book in confusion, the man disappeared into the night. Suddenly everything felt very scary and sinister. What this mean for Matt? Was this really happening? He slowly opened the book and began to read. The first page said, to kill someone, you first must understand them. Matt's heart sank as he realized what his father's gift really was. It was an instruction manual on how to become a murderer. As he turned the pages, he saw pictures and diagrams of different ways to kill people. There were descriptions of how to make someone suffer and die slowly, or how to quickly and efficiently end their life. Then he came to a note stuck in between pages, it read. Matt. This book has been a curse to our family and has always found its way from father to son. You will never be able to get rid of it. You can burn it, throw it in the trash, or toss it into the sea. No matter what you try it will always find its way back into your hands. You'll find out soon that you must do as the book instructs or the murders will progressively get closer to you. I'm sorry I died and it had to come to you. I wish I could have saved you the pain it always brings. Dad. Matt's hands trembled as he realized the weight of what was happening. He was now part of a legacy of death and violence. There was no escaping it. The book was his fate, his destiny. He decided to head home and try to get to bed. Maybe tomorrow he'd wake up and find that this had all been a bad dream. As he was driving down the cemetery road he looked at the book setting on the seat next to him. Then in one quick motion, he grabbed the book and hurled it out the window. He watched in the rearview mirror as it hit the ground and tumbled in, over end. Nearly an hour later he made it back to his apartment. The drive home had been good for him as it gave him some time to clear his head. He walked into his apartment, locked the door, and threw his keys onto the little table in the hallway. He froze and felt as if a thousand spiders ran up his back and into his hair. There on the table was the black book. It had found its way back to him. The book began to shake, then glow slightly. It flung itself open but the page was blank. Then an image started to appear, it was like someone was rapidly sketching a scene with a pencil. He recognized the scene right away, it was the oriental market where he often shopped. The final detail started to appear. It was Zhao, the old man who worked the counter at the market. His image began to turn red and then dissolve into a red pool across the floor of the market scene. The book slammed shut and everything went black. Matt's mind reeled as he realized what the book had just shown him. He had to kill Zhao. No! He shouted at the book. He couldn't just go and kill this old man. He didn't know him very well but he was always very friendly to Matt. He wasn't about to murder anyone, he didn't care what the book wanted or what his dad said in the note. He wasn't a murderer and would never be. He reached for the book to throw it away again but as soon as his fingers touched the cover, he felt an electric shock. The book flew out of his hand and across the room, hitting the wall with a thud. It landed upside down and opened to the page with Zhao's image. The page was no longer blank, it now showed a scene of Matt kneeling over Zhao's dead body with blood all around them. No, he would not do it. He headed into the bathroom and took a long hot shower. He tried not to think of the book or anything else that happened that day. He got out of the shower, put on his pajamas, and got into bed. He found he was really tired and actually fell asleep right away. He woke up late the next day. The clock said 5.05, but that couldn't be possible. He could see the sun shining brightly through the curtained window. Had he slept all day? He made himself some coffee and turned on the TV. Sure enough, the 5 o'clock news was on and it was an on-scene news report of some kind. The reporter stated, We have been told that Susie Lee, the daughter of Zhao Lee, the owner of Lee's Oriental Market, was shot and killed last night in an apparent robbery. Mr. Lee normally works the night shift at the market but less than an hour before the robbery occurred, he began feeling ill and asked his daughter to watch the shop for a while. Matt sat down hard on the couch spilling his coffee. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. This couldn't be happening. It must be some kind of sick joke. He turned off the TV and just sat there in shock. That poor girl was killed because I couldn't do what the book wanted. I can't kill a person, but I also can't take seeing some other innocent person die, either way, it's my fault. He heard the voice of his father. I told you what would happen if you didn't do as the book wants. 
This is just the beginning. If you don't do what the book tells you, more people will die. And the deaths will get closer to me. He looked over to where the book flew last night, but it wasn't there. He looked back to the TV and the book was right in front of him on the coffee table. It was open to the page with Zhao's image. It still wants me to kill Zhao, even though his daughter was just murdered by someone else. How am I supposed to kill him? I can't believe I'm even thinking about this. Then the book's pages began to flip and then settled open to an image of a knife block with handles of several knives sticking out. It was his very own block of knives that were on the kitchen counter. He got up and headed for the kitchen, and to his knife block. He chose one of the middle-sized knives and drew it out of the block. He went back to the couch and looked at the book, it was now showing Zhao setting at a table and a shadowy figure was standing up behind him with the gleam of a knife in his hand. He knew that figure, was himself. He was filled with fear and dread of what might happen, who the next person would be to die if he didn't do this terrible deed. He knew this kind of act had to be done at night, so he spent the next few hours pacing his house and wondering why this was happening to him. He finally decided it was time, and put on a dark hoodie, he slid the knife's blade up his sleeve so that the handle was still held in his palm. Headed out of his house into Lee's Oriental Market. He got there and saw that the place was closed up. He tried the door but it was locked. He looked through the window and saw that the place was dark inside. He pulled out his knife and used the handle to break one of the panes of glass in the door, then reached in and unlocked the door from the inside. He walked in, and made his way to the back of the store. He remembered seeing a staircase at the rear corner of the store. He bumped into a display and a bunch of cans fell to the floor. He froze. I came here to kill this man but for some reason, I never thought about getting caught. He stood there for what felt like an hour but he must not have been heard. Faint sounds were coming from the rear of the store where the staircase was. He proceeded more cautiously now. As he neared the stairs he could see a dim light coming from the second floor. He crept slowly up the stairs and came to a closed door at the top. The light was coming from under the door. He put his ear to the door and could hear voices inside. After listening for a minute he could tell that it was coming from a TV. Some sitcom, he could hear the audience's laughter. Then much louder laughter from someone in the room. Must be Zhao he thought. Kind of odd to be laughing and enjoying a show when his daughter had just been murdered the night before. She's a whore just like the damn girl. Flirting with every guy that came in the store. It was Zhao, was he talking to someone else? Her flirting didn't get her out from that idiot putting a bullet in her head, did it? Good thing I made her work last night, that could have been me. But that idiot did me a favor, I won't have to waste my time trying to beat sense into her every day anymore. Damn whore, just like her mom, while well I put a stop to her mom whoring around. That idiot did it for me this time. What is Zhao saying? Did he kill his wife? Did he say he was beating his daughter? Matt thought to himself all the while his own anger was building up. He found himself wanting to kill this man. He wasn't the nice man that ran the market anymore, he was evil. Matt slowly turned the doorknob and opened the door enough to see inside. It was Zhao sitting alone at a table facing away from the door and watching a TV on the far wall. Matt opened the door enough to slip inside and began to slowly stalk up behind Zhao. He pulled the knife from his sleeve, came up just behind Zhao, and as fast as a snake strike, covered Zhao's mouth with one hand, pulling him up and off the chair, stretching and exposing his neck. Something took control of Matt's voice and he spoke out loud. Li Zhao. I am death, and I have come for you. With a quick and steady stroke, slid the knife across his exposed neck and spilled his lifeblood from him. I released him, and took several quick steps back. Choa slumped back into the chair, dead. What just happened? Someone else something else, just took control of me. My hands, my voice. That wasn't me, that wasn't me at all. Then suddenly I had a vision of myself wiping the knife's blade on Choa's shirt, sliding the blade back up my sleeve and quickly going down the stairs, going further to the rear of the store, through double doors, turning left and the second row of stock shelves, turning right, and running to the end where a large, steel door was closed and barred. I've never been in the back of this store. 
then a voice echoed in my head. Now. I immediately followed the path the vision showed me, and sure enough, came to that large steel door. I lifted the locking bar and the voice again in my head said, wait. Then a vision of slowly opening the door, going out into the alley, to the left, and a dozen steps to another door across the alley, going through that door and a long hallway out the front door onto the next street over. Without delay, I again followed the path my vision showed me, and again it was exactly as shown to me. I stepped out onto the sidewalk and began walking at a normal pace back home. I started going over what I had just done, and that force had taken me over and allowed me to do such a terrible deed, like I had done it a thousand times before. Maybe I had, or that the being or force that took me over had, and a thousand times was nowhere near the actual number. I had a split second image of tens of thousands of times, and throughout hundreds, or even thousands of years. I truly, had become death. Himself.